For the Democratic perspective, we bring in New Jersey Congressman, member of the House Foreign Affairs Committee, Tom Malinowski, who's been in a number of these hearings. We appreciate you taking the time, sir, on Veterans Day weekend. We'll get to that uh, in a moment. One thing that seems to be missing in all of this is the link uh, between the behavior of possibly keeping aid from the Ukrainians or trading aid uh, for a Oval Office visit, et cetera, and an order specifically from the president. Can you find that? Do you have that? So uh, thanks for having me, Leland. It's good to be back. And, and I think every single witness has told us that the order to freeze the aid came directly from the president. They're consistent on that. And they're also consistent in saying that that nobody knew why he did it. The president ordered a freeze but, in but aid. Who do, you, do you, but do you have anybody who got that order specifically from the president? Uh, it, it, there were meetings at the National Security Council that included the Defense Department, the State Department, and they were told by the Office of Management and Budget, this order comes directly right, from the president of the United to, States. I, yeah. They may have been told that, and you have the secondhand information of someone saying the president did order, but you don't have anybody yet, just to be clear, who has said the president told me no aid without investigating the Bidens. It, it, th there's no other explanation for why the president would have made that decision. There's no, no other credible explanation has been given. And, and you know, the president well, well, could do that. He could send us Mick Mulvaney. He could send us a witness who could actually tell us something exculpatory here. And they've refused to do that. So well, that, that, That's a different issue. But con conceivably, what I'm hearing you say is you don't have anybody who got the order from the president. You have people who say they talk to people who got the order from the president. Well, we did, we did speak to Ambassador Sondland, who spoke right. several times directly to the president, and who asked the president, what do you want from the Ukrainians? This was when the aid was frozen, and everyone was trying to figure out, Mr. President, why have you frozen the aid? Why won't you meet with the Ukrainians? And Sondland asked him, what do you want? And the president told Sondland, I want them to but do didn't, these investigations. And, and Sondland also said, though, in the testimony, he was told there is no quid pro quo, at least that was the conversation, he went back and revised yeah. a different part of his testimony. The Let me... same, no, the same part, actually. He said, the president said, there's no quid pro quo, but I need them to do the investigations, which is the quid pro quo. But, but this, is, this is the point that Nikki Haley was, is going to make here in a minute, but the, the idea that how do you have a crime if the aid was eventually released, which it was. Take a listen to Nikki Haley. You're going to impeach a president for asking for a favor that didn't happen and and giving money and it wasn't withheld i don't know what you would impeach him on I mean, look nora impeachment is like the death penalty for a public official when you look at the transcript there's nothing in that transcript that warrants the death penalty for the president the founders in their infinite wisdom said high crimes and misdemeanors uh, where is the high crime well, first of all, it's a really bad argument to say that the aid was ultimately restored and therefore he didn't commit a crime. That's sort of like saying attempted murder is not a crime. The aid was withheld, contrary to what Nikki Haley just said. It was frozen for weeks. It constituted 10 percent of the Ukrainian defense budget at a time when they were under attack by Russia. And the only reason it was given to Ukraine was because the whistleblower complaint blew up in the public and Republican senators started frantically calling the White House to say, Mr. Well, President, the, the, you've got the, to stand down and, and, timeline, and release this money. Yeah, the timeline between when, when the whistleblower complaint came in and the aid was released, as you pointed out, is, uh, is certainly uh, coincidental. If you believe in coincidence here in Washington, could be something else if you do not. But it, it begs this question. Uh, in, in terms of what you talk about witnesses, whether Mick Mulvaney comes and talks or John Bolton comes and talks, et cetera. Why should the president say, OK, you can talk to whoever you want when Republicans are asking to talk to people and Democrats are saying no? Why is it OK for Democrats to get any witness they want and Republicans can't? Well, they, they can get any witness that can actually speak to what the president did and why he did it. So that includes, so, well, that, uh, well, Adam Schiff seems to be saying no to the whistleblower and the whistleblower sources. 
Well, the whistle, the, well we, we may have spoken to some of the whistleblower sources already. Okay. We don't know who they are. The whistleblower is like a guy who, who blew the fire alarm, you know. Yeah, and, but, but still, and when but still we, if you want to have a, this open, a if, you want the Amer if you want the American people mm -hmm. to say this isn't a political event, that this is about what's good for the country, why not err on the side of letting the Republicans talk to everybody that they want to? Well, because we have whistleblower protection laws in this it does, country. It does not, that, does not, that does not keep you from being called to testify, sir. You and I both whistle, know that. The, the whistleblower is somebody who, who saw something happen but was not the first-hand participant. And we've talked to the first-hand participants. Okay. We that, have people who, who spoke the to the president. We have people who actually took part in this. And they are willing to testify, and they've they've told us a consistent story. We have heard so, we have heard your yeah. uh, your thoughts on this, Nikki Haley, sort of previewing what the defense may look like either in the House uh, when Jim Jordan is there on the Intelligence Committee or in the Senate as well. We appreciate your time, sir, especially on Veterans Day. I know we were going to get to that. We'll have you back to talk about uh, your work on those issues sometime in the not so distant future. I appreciate it. Thank, Thank you, you so sir. much. Thank you, sir. Enjoy enjoy the last days of the recess.